president had actually been acknowledging that President Trump was unusually restrained in speaking respectfully about Christine Blasey Ford and her allegations of sexual assault when she was 15 until he unloaded at a rally. What neighborhood was it in? I don't know. Where's the house? I don't know. Upstairs, downstairs, where was it? I don't know. But I had one beer. That's the only thing I remember. What the president did last night was just sickening. Maybe we should only be surprised that it took him so long to do it. The media is saying that Trump's comments about Ford were a uh, mockery or an attack are the same media who thought Matt Damon's ridicule of Kavanaugh was sparkling and brilliant and daring. No, we don't know if President Trump thinks it's useful to ridicule a woman claiming she was sexually assaulted or if he just did it because he thought it was fun. But let's take a moment to reflect that the president of the United States believes it's appropriate. There appears to be no bottom. You're mean. You're attacking victims. You don't have any empathy. No. He's making a series of common sense conclusions about Ford's very shaky claims and shifting accounts. As we just saw, Molly, uh, media really hammered the president over this for appearing to taunt Christine Ford in that fashion, especially given that many sexual assault victims don't remember all the details of what happened. Well, people kept saying on, in the media that he was taunting or he was mocking or he was ridiculing Christine Ford. What he was doing was pointing out what anybody could see when they watched her testimony, which is there were major holes, there were major flaws, there were major contradictions. And I actually thought that a lot of the media should have been pointing this out themselves. And you didn't see this. You didn't see people going through and looking at her story, which changed over time multiple times. They never were able to corroborate any aspect of it. They spent all their time looking at ice throwing at parties and yearbook things, and they should have been actually doing what he did there. They should have been pointing out that she had flaws in her testimony. Well, if you look at the transcript, you could say, yes, he's, he's saying that if we're going to scrutinize the media gonna, uh, and political system's going to scrutinize the nominee, let's look at the accuser. But the tone, it, to me, was unmistakably taunting. It really was about the tone and the problem with the tone and all those things you're saying, Molly, are absolutely 100% true about missing uh, the fair coverage of problems in her testimony was that you, you then he is speaking also to people who believe her and who also have had their own experiences so it looks as though he is mocking them personally and that is one of the problems with President Trump and and his tone when he addresses problems like this is Except that people interpret it one way and 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 it's harmful it can be harmful he previously said he found her credible which was much more than a lot of people thought when they right. first saw her testimony. and he did get some credit it, it, for that reminiscent of when he was remember he was mocking a New York Times reporter yes. and, and then you explain that again it just it, 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 it doesn't sit well with a lot of people and it, reporter it just, with it, disabilities uh, uh, the president oh, telling yeah. Judge Janine, um, I had to even the playing field when he did that. But Sarah Sanders and other White House officials telling reporters, no, 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 he wasn't mocking her. He was just stating the facts. And Sarah Sanders was lying. I, I, I don't understand why Donald well, Trump Why do you call it a lie? She's defending because her boss. She, okay, you're allowed to defend your boss. I don't know why you just can't say the president was making a point. And the point is what Molly was saying. Molly is conflating a legitimate conversation about this situation with Donald Trump just enjoying himself unnecessarily taunting someone. I think there's a I don't thing think that that's what yeah, was happening. Molly respond. I think there's an issue where a lot of people don't understand Donald Trump's appeal is that he says the things oh, the that appeal. you're not supposed to say. It was almost silly how much deference people provided to Dr. Ford given that she had no corroboration for her allegations. He's being told you're not allowed to say anything. You're not allowed to point out that there's no substantiation for her story. He went ahead and did it and I think a lot of Americans were thinking I, why aren't more people I saying this? I get the this? appeal of it just because something is appealing to a you should be able to say true things. You should be able to say true things and not be condemned for it. I, I think there's a big gap between what he was doing and Saying, the, the he wasn't example even using a mocking of tone Donald anyways. Trump wasn't mocking a reporter with disabilities. He was. Well, actually, just, that he is, just and, was. And actually, this is a good opportunity to say that, too. Donald Trump d did that mocking of that reporter, which he's done with many people. It was portrayed in the media as if he was mocking a reporter because of his disabilities. When he he's actually, he but he's actually used, right. he's used that same mocking tone with three or four other people who do not share that disability. And that was a very, that's a very good example of a media lie let about me, something important. Let me use our last minute to ask you this question, Susan. Uh, there is a culture war debate here, the media carrying on, in which the president is talking about it's a scary time for young men and they're in danger of having their lives ruined by uncorroborated allegations. What do you mean? I mean, it's a fascinating debate being stoked by everybody, including the press. Yeah, and we've talked about this before on the show. It's, it, again, another gap in media coverage, which is the Me Too movement and even prior to that on campuses with a sexual assault epidemic, so-called epidemic, that there is a lack of due process 
We've seen it with very, some high-profile cases, and we've seen it in cases that are, aren't reported in the media but are reported on smaller blogs and things. Right. And, and that is carried over into this, where you have one person being accused and, and, and being found guilty before really any of the evidence is laid out. And that well, is what that, that debate about. will continue, obviously. And it was fascinating to me, the mainstream media kind of scolding Susan Collins for her 45-minute speech in favor of Joe Kavanaugh, but very happy with Lisa Murkowski, who voted against the judge.